Hi, I'm a sand recap and this is a movie to get. The Lair, Lieutenant Kate Sinclair, a pilot for the Royal Air Force, is dropped over desert terrain. She takes cover in an abandoned underground bunker where deadly biological weapons made by humans, half human, half alien, are activated. Some missiles suddenly attack a group of fighter pilots led by Captain Kate. The pilots make an unsuccessful attempt to defend themselves by employing countermeasures. When one of the missiles hits Kate's aircraft, she remembers some good times she had with her family at home. Kate hits the ground and is saved by a teammate. However, a group of insurgents with rifles arrive. Kate's teammate tries to shoot at the insurgents and asks her to pretend to be dead. However, he is shot down. Kate uses her deception to kill two insurgents as she continues to pretend to be dead. The sword of one rebel charges Kate, but her teammate, who still has some life in him, shoots him down. Kate says her heartfelt goodbye to her teammate and tries to call for help over the radio, but no one responds. It turns out that one of the insurgents made it out of the fight, and now he's back with his teammates. Kate is discovered by the insurgents, who use their guns to attack her. Despite being greatly outnumbered, she fires back and refuses to surrender. Kate fights her opponents as best she can and hits a few shots, but she doesn't have any more bullets, so she has to run into a strange cave entrance. Kate explores the cave, which turns out to be some kind of bunker, and uses one of her glow sticks to hide from the insurgents. As Kate tries to avoid her enemies, tensions rise as the insurgents pursue her. After some exploration, Kate finds herself in a strange room with a decaying body. Kate investigates the room after seeing this and discovers a piece of paper with some Russian words written on it. Because there are multiple pods with bodies inside, Kate quickly realizes that this is a human subject testing laboratory. Kate takes a portable hard drive that she finds. However, the rebels also reach the laboratory. Kate uses this distraction to surprise the insurgent after they are shocked to see the bodies in the pods. To protect herself, she knocks him down and steals his weapon. Kate is hit by one of the pods when the insurgents fire at her. The body in the pod falls out as a result of this. Kate finds a vent and decides to enter it after escaping the bullets. Kate walks slowly through to avoid being searched by the insurgents. The dead body suddenly comes to life, and it turns out to be a terrifying monster. It feasts on the body of one of the insurgents after killing him. Kate, on the other hand, is apprehended by an insurgent but she fights him off with a flare and ascends a ladder. No matter how many times Kate kicks another insurgent, he still holds onto Kate's leg and refuses to let go. On the other hand, the monster appears and cuts him down with a single blow. Kate flees in shock and confusion and manages to escape the monster by exiting the cave, but in the process, she also gets hurt. The monster is not killed when Kate shoots it with her rifle. In order to keep it inside, she ties a chain around the doors. Beardy, an insurgent who goes by the nickname Beardy, confronts Kate, but when he sees the monster, he quickly flees. Kate tries to get to safety, but as her injuries get worse, time is running out. The sudden discovery of Kate by a group of American soldiers reveals that they were sent here to find her. The hard drive and Kate's locket are taken away by a cornrowed soldier after he thoroughly examines her body. Kate begs the team to leave this province right away, but the soldiers don't take her seriously and bring her to their camp. Beardy is also shown to have been captured by the American soldiers during Kate's meeting with the Major. The Major is informed by Kate of the Russian bunkers and the deadly monster, but because he thinks it's ridiculous, he doesn't listen to her nonsense. That's when Sergeant Hook shows up and gives Kate his seal of approval. However, Kate's advice is ignored by the Major even at that point. Subsequently, Kate confronts Soldier Cornrow regarding the theft of her locket. However, she tries to appear innocent. When Hook shows up, the women are about to engage in muscle wrestling, but he tells Soldier Cornrow to return Kate's locket. Kate needs more information about Hook. Therefore, he claims that his own carelessness caused him to lose two of his soldiers in battle. The Major now opens a letter addressed to him and exhibits signs of anxiety. The Major calls his colonel to report his interaction with Kate as a result. While the doctor treats Kate for her injuries, she notices Beardy next to her. Beardy, who also saw the monster, is asked to speak up by Kate. However, the doctor informs her that Beardy does not speak English. Hook enters the tent and approaches Kate to inquire about what she saw in the bunkers. Because she has a photographic memory, Kate writes down the Russian text she saw in the laboratory. Beardy explains that the Soviets were the masterminds behind everything Kate saw, and that the text means, do not open. Hook argues that if the mysterious bunkers belonged to the Soviets, they would have to be 30 years old, and no human would have been able to live there for that long. Beardy, on the other hand, 
asserts that whatever is below is not human. The monsters appear to be rising from their slumber as night approaches, breaking out of their pods. They escape the bunker thanks to the monster's ability to unlock locked doors. As it turns out, the Major has decided to use the hard drive that Kate discovered as leverage against the Colonel because he is receiving a voluntary discharge. The soldiers are monitoring the area outside for any insurgents. Despite this, Hook continues to harbor suspicions as a result of what Kate and Beardy said. One soldier vanishes suddenly, and another soldier spots a monster. They start firing at the monsters, but the monsters move quickly enough to dodge the bullets. The Major orders his soldiers to eliminate the monsters after learning of the attack. However, it will require additional bullets to eliminate them. Eventually, the monsters enter the camp. When one of them enters the Major's tent, things get even worse. When the Major tries to kill the monster, he runs out of ammunition. As a result, he tries to pull out a larger gun. Kate is attacked after yet another monster enters the doctor's tent. It strangles Kate with its snaky tongue but does not tongue massage her. Fortunately, Beardy kills the monster by slicing off its juicy tongue and stabbing it to death. This saves Kate. Even the Major struggles against the monster he is fighting as more soldiers are killed by the brutal invasion. Kate now joins Hook and the other survivors. The Major can thus strike the monster down with his bat, however, he is also having trouble with his injuries. He wishes to remain alone, but his soldiers carry him to the remaining group. Kate climbs on top of the monster and repeatedly stabs it after it attacks them once more. The group decides to hide inside an empty cargo container because there are too many monsters to deal with. The soldiers, perplexed, inquire about Beardy's knowledge of the creatures. Beardy discusses the Soviet invasion of his nation and how the monsters had also begun to appear around this time. Beardy claims that his father was once a member of the team hunting down the monsters, but he was killed in the process. The monsters flee as the sun rises. However, they also transport all of the decomposing monsters. The soldiers attempt to devise their next strategy now that they feel safe. They look around for a while before finding the body of a monster and taking it to the doctor for an examination. Despite his reservations, the doctor decides to carry out the inspection anyway. The doctor makes more observations and comes to the conclusion that the monsters dislike the sun because their bodies may not be as accustomed to UV rays as humans are. The doctor now removes some of the monster's internal organs by ripping through its body. Because it possesses human organs, the monster turns out to be humanoid, shocking the doctor. He tells Kate that the hard drive she found contains all the information they require and apologizes to her for having doubts about her. The Major goes on to explain that the Soviets had discovered a way to incorporate foreign DNA into humans, and the American Intelligence Army has been studying this province for some time. In December 1979, some Soviets discovered an alien spacecraft in the Hindukish Mountains. This was the beginning of everything. The Major asserts that this was the real justification for the Soviets' invasion of Afghanistan. They needed the alien DNA to integrate into human test subjects, and that this was the real justification for the invasion. The soldiers cannot comprehend that the Soviet-Afghan war was nothing more than a cover-up. Since they don't have much fuel left, the group now needs to find another way to get away. The Major is remorseful for failing his team, however, the monster's body suddenly reactivates and attacks the soldiers. It fights off Hook and the other soldiers while also grabbing Kate and attempting to bind her with its long tongue. Things appear to be bad, but Kate quickly thinks and buttheads the monster to escape. After that, the soldiers realize that the monster wasn't just licking Kate's hormones. Rather, it was reading Kate's mind with its tongue. Because she knows where the Russian bunkers are, Kate suggests that they blow them up. But Beardy doesn't want to leave because he wants to get revenge on his father for his death. Together, Kate, Hook, and the others devise a strategy to use the remaining ammunition to blow up the bunkers. Reaching the bunkers, everyone gathers their weapons. All of their bombs are set off there. Because of this, a monster can seize Hook and separate him from his team. The bombs are prepared to go off. However, Kate decides to return inside to save Hook after receiving a radio signal from him. At first, the soldiers don't like the idea, but eventually they agree with Kate. On the other hand, the doctor's radio picks up a frequency alert informing everyone to leave the area within 20 minutes. Kate and the other people are informed of it right away by the doctor. However, despite the danger, they decide to continue. Hook cuts off the juicy tongue quickly, enabling him to kill the monster. Hook takes out his weapons after he discovers the soldier's body. While the team looks for Hook in the lab, Kate tries to get in touch with him to find out where he is. In contrast, Beardy discovers additional test subjects and appears to identify them as his people. Hook sends Kate a radio call so he can reach her. However, a monster suddenly appears before him. During this time, 
Some of the rebels attack the doctor after spotting him inside the vehicle. More monsters begin to appear. Consequently, the soldiers flee and lock the door. However, in order to keep the door shut, someone needs to stay behind. The British soldier agrees to self-sacrifice and persuades the others to flee. As soldier Cornrow observes a second monster and stays behind to fight it, tensions rise. Kate wishes to assist her. However, Hook requests that Kate remain with the team inside the lift. Soldier Cornrow confronts her opponent, but uses a fire extinguisher to get the upper hand and kill it. The new meal is consumed by the monster immediately. The British soldier, on the other hand, loses strength and lets go of the door. While all of the monsters in the area are killed, Hook is able to escape the blast. Because Kate and the others are now being attacked by monsters that are swarming the lift, the vehicle is beginning to be dragged deeper into the bunker. In the meantime, the doctor tries, but fails, to fight the insurgents. He will have to give in to the rebels. Beardy confronts a monster and learns that it is actually his father, who has been altered genetically. However, it soon kills him. In the end, the vehicle descends into the bunker. Kate is fortunate in that she is able to exit the lift just in time to avoid the crash and reunite with Hook. After escaping the bunker, Kate and Hook manage to kill the insurgents who were attacking the doctor. The survivors quickly jump into a car and drive as far away as they can after spotting a jet nearby. The massive bomb is dropped by the aircraft, which eliminates all of the bunkers and leaves no trace. Kate reveals that Soldier Cornrow was able to hand over the hard drive to her before committing suicide, and Hook, Kate, and the Doctor all survive the explosion. At the end of the movie, the survivors attempt to drive away to safety, but the car has problems. 